What is going on, guys? So, here we are, episode two. Here we go. Welcome to episode two of the TIG series. We are going to be going over some basics again yet today. And like I said in the previous videos, or the previous video, the episode one, if you haven't seen that, click back and check it out. It was last Saturday. We are going to be going over the entire TIG process start to finish. So if you guys are already TIG welding, then a lot of these beginning videos are not gonna be for you. But if you are a beginner, or you're looking to get into this, these are where these videos are going to uh, really help you out. So I have to apologize first and foremost for the, the Grizzly Adams thing going on here. My barber is shut down and truthfully, I don't trust myself with scissors or clippers. We could definitely get into some interesting looks if I get my hands on clippers, but other than that, I hope everybody else is okay out there. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you are taking the recommendations that the CDC has instilled seriously. And, uh, you know, not freaking out about everything. Because all this really takes is a little bit of common sense and we can kind of kill this thing where it started. So, be smart, be safe, and don't panic. But, let's get on to what we're doing today. Today is going to be all about setting up your torch. We are not going to do any welding again in this video, but we are going to show you how to set up your torch right out of the box, how to set up your cups, what cups to choose, and also we are going to be sharpening our tungsten for various different metals. Now, we're going to focus mainly on DC TIG welding today, which things are set up a little bit differently, but not that much differently. It's just going to be all about the tungsten grind. So, what we've got here is we have a number 9 or number 20. Number 9 would be air-cooled, number 20 is water-cooled. This happens to be a CK Worldwide flex head torch, so you can bend it. I don't like to bend it too much because you can only bend it so many times before the copper inside breaks. But, number 20, water-cooled flex head torch. And I'll bring you guys down to the table so that hopefully you'll be able to see in frame because it's hard to frame on a GoPro that you can't see the screen on. But you've got a 330 seconds, 2% lanthanated tungsten. We have a stubby back cap. We have our normal size back cap. We have what equates to basically a number three or a number four cup. We have our collet body and gas diffuser. We have our collet. And we have our little cup shield that goes on the torch. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to assemble this torch as though we just got this thing right out of the box. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check to see which side has the larger threading and which side has the smaller threading. The larger side is where your gas diffuser and collet body are going to go. And this side is where your back cap is going to go. Now first things first, you're going to want to put on this little heat insulator. Now this little heat insulator basically insulates the torch, which is made out of kind of a rubbery substance, from taking too much heat and melting your torch out. Now the next step is you're going to want to take your collet body. Now this collet body, I believe, is not 330 seconds, which I thought it was. It's probably 16th, which, haha, we happen to have some of that too. So we will use that. Yeah, so we are we are 116, which we have a 330 seconds collet, so that's going to make things a little funky, but this really doesn't matter. So the next step on this is once you get your insulator in place, you're going to want to take your collet body and screw it down in there nice and tight. 
And the reason it needs to be nice and tight is because if it isn't, when you go to screw everything else together, you're going to have a bit of a problem. In that, when you take your cup off, it's going to take the collet body out with it. Now, now that you've got that on there, next step would be to put on your cup, basically. You know, this is just the, the ceramic cups that come, you know, in the, in the kit itself. I think this basically equates to like a number three or a number four. You just lay that down on there. Screw it down. Make sure it's tight. You don't have to go super like wrench tight on this. Just make sure that it's snug and you're good to go. So that's what we've got so far. We have our collet body and gas diffuser installed. We have our little heat insulator installed. We have our cup installed. Now what you're going to want to do is flip the torch over, install your collet. Once you've got your collet installed, we're going to go over and sharpen up our tungsten. Now I'm going to bring you guys over. I'll show you how we're going to sharpen the tungsten, assuming that we're welding mild steel. So we're going to sharpen this up, assuming we're welding mild steel. So I think we're going to do this. Uh, maybe we'll do it on the grinder. Yeah, we'll do it on the grinder take you over there all right so we opted for the sanding wheel because it has a metal table where I could put the camera if I couldn't put the camera there I can't hold it and do this at the same time but basically what we're gonna be looking to do is create a point on the end of this right here now right now it's just a blunt end we want to create a point so that we've got some form of arc control so we're gonna go ahead and do that <laughs> So now we got ourselves a nice little point on that tungsten and we'll go over why this matters and what the point angles and everything are over back at the bench. All right, so now that we got our tungsten sharpened, let's go over a couple of things when it comes to sharpening tungsten. Now the first thing you might be wondering is what angle do I sharpen that tungsten at and does it matter? And yes, it does matter very much. So. What we're going to do for illustration purposes, we're actually going to use this piece of aluminum and we're going to bend it in different ways. Now, ultimately, when you generate an arc with your welder, that arc is going to come off of probably the lower, the lower 2% of the electrode or the lower 2% of your taper. And what that does ultimately is it creates an arc that'll be about that wide. So if you can imagine, you know, right here, the width of this at about that level would be, I don't know, let's just say four or five millimeters. You're going to get a four or five millimeter arc about this low. So the more that you taper and the sharper that you taper, the sharper your arc is going to be ultimately. So if you've got a pinpoint needle point you're going to be focusing pretty much all of your heat straight down, directly down with a very small arc cone. And in future episodes when we get to welding, you'll see what I mean about that arc cone. Now, of course, it all depends on your torch height as well. If your torch height is too high, your arc cone is going to be very big. If your torch height is too low, you're going to dip into the material. If it's just right, you're going to have a very controlled very sharp arc now where you don't necessarily want a super sharp arc is on ultra thin material and wow saying ultra there just kind of but on ultra thin material because when you focus a ton of heat into a very small area like let's just say we're doing you know one millimeter thick titanium that arc being focused so small in a butt joint is literally just going to create a hole you're never even going to get the material around it hot enough so when you're welding thinner stuff like that, you take your tip of your tungsten and you bring it out a little bit and you'll get a softer, more fanned out arc that will cover a little bit more material and give you a little bit more leeway when it comes into actually punching filler rod in there. But again, this is more advanced techniques and we'll get into that. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea. So when you're first starting out, you're going to want your tungsten to look about like that. So that's a 
a pretty safe angle and you can't see it really on this 1 16th because it's too small and the GoPro I don't think will focus that close up but it is about at that angle so what you're going to want to do set it to this angle grind it at this angle and you'll have a pretty good starting point you can then play with it as you start to get welding all right so now that we got that crazy explanation out of the way we are now going to take our tungsten and we're going to insert it into the rear Let's not use that clip. We're going to place it in to our torch. And you can literally just place it right here through the back. And then depending on your cup, and this isn't going to tighten down because we have the wrong collet in here, but you throw on your back cap. And then depending on your diameter of your cup, so this cup, I think, let's just say it's a number four cup. That means that it's four sixteenths or a quarter of an inch. So what that means is that ultimately we can stick our tungsten out a quarter of an inch. So you use your cup diameter to determine how far you can stick your tungsten out. And the rule of thumb is basically cup diameter turned into inches of stick out. So this being a quarter of an inch, we can have about a quarter of an inch of stick out. We don't really need to measure a quarter of an inch, but right about there is probably a quarter of an inch of stick out. So that's what you're looking at right there. Now, once you've got that good to go, you want to check over everything. Make sure that your cup is tight. Make sure that your back cap is tight. Make sure that everything in the torch is good. And then you know what? You are ready to throw my phone out the window because it never fails to go off when I'm in the middle of a video. And there it goes again. Let's wait for it. Okay, I think it might have stopped. Now, you have a very basic torch setup. You are good to go. You're good to start welding. And you're probably going to make a mess. But at least you now know how to set the torch up properly. All right, guys. I know this video wasn't super, super long, but we're going to do a quick recap just so that you guys know all the names of everything that's going on with your torch assembly. So number one, this is the torch body. It is, you can separate it. There are all your hoses. This one happens to be water-cooled, so we have two water lines and a gas line. Then you have your insulator. This insulator goes between the torch body and your cup. This is called the cup. And the next thing you have is your collet body and gas diffuser. And now this is what is normally with the kits. So the tungsten comes through the center here. All of your argon flow comes through these little holes around the edge. Unless you use something like I use, this is called a gas lens, which has a diffuser built in that diffuses the gas flow much better. You don't need these right off the rip. You can actually use a collet body without an issue without having any problems. This just gives you a little bit of extra leeway when it comes to gas coverage. But collet body, you'll be good to go. Then you've got your collet, which this happens to be a split collet, or not a split collet. Split collets are what come with these. This is a tapered, um, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it it's a tapered collet that basically when you tighten it down, it moves to one side and it pinches the... Uh, the tungsten and I found that these last a lot longer so I, I tend to use these more then you have your back cap this happens to be the long back cap this happens to be the stubby back cap and if you notice your tungsten will go pretty much all the way in there so if you want to use the stubby one you're going to have to cut it the tungsten that is all right so I hope you guys found that video informative in the next video, we're going to start going over turning on the machine, getting the machine settings right, what you should set your machine at when you first start welding so that you have halfway decent results. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed that one. I will be making another one next Saturday. It will be episode three. And uh, again, stay safe, everybody. Stay smart and don't panic. I will see you guys on the next one. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I truly hope you enjoy all these videos because I really, really like making them. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a good night, everybody.
Thank <laughs> you.